Okay, I think we are live. Uh, so <laughs> hopefully this is working. Okay, so for everyone who is watching this in the Marketing Audiobooks Wide group, uh, first of all, hello. <laughs> and I'm Rebecca Hefner, and this is the first time I've ever used StreamYard. So we're going to see how this works. <laughs> um, and I'm so happy to have Damon Courtney from Book Funnel here. And he is going to answer lots and lots of questions for us about uh, how we can help increase our audiobook sales and do some really super awesome things with Book Funnel uh, for our wide audiobooks. And then we also have author Lainey Davis, who has been gracious enough to uh, join us and help monitor any um, comments and questions that we have. So hi! <laughs> Hello, awesome. everybody. Hey. Okay, so to kick things off, first of all, Damon, I just want to thank you for making time in your busy schedule to join us and welcome you. And um, if you want to kick us off and just start by telling us a little bit about Book Funnel and you know anything you want to tell us about how it can help us with audiobooks and all the good stuff, we'd love to hear it. Sure. So, uh, so Book Funnel started a little over eight years ago. We actually just passed our eighth year mark in in October, and um, it's a funny story. So, Book Funnel launched as an ebook delivery platform, right? So, we were a service for authors to deliver ebooks outside of the traditional stores. I built it because I I had a reader magnet for my mailing list. I I self published a fantasy trilogy. And I needed to deliver my reader magnet and that really didn't exist uh, or like everybody had kind of cobbled together these sort of hodgepodge methods of doing it. And it wasn't very good for readers. And so I had built uh, I built Book Funnel specifically for me. And then I thought, oh, I think other authors could use this, too. Um, the first feature. So we put that it took me 14 months to build Book Funnel, to build all the code, to to figure out all these devices. I bought like every Kindle, every Kobo in existence. And I sat there for a year just like taking notes on a yellow legal pad. And, um, you know, when we launched the first week that that after we launched, uh, we got our first feature request for direct sales delivery. Authors wanted to use Book Funnel to deliver sales. Um, and then the second feature request, the second week was deliver audiobooks. Um, so it was like, you know, as we're sitting here talking, literally the first two things that authors asked us for after I'd spent a year building everything that I built uh, was was direct sales and audiobooks. Uh, it took us till 2000. That was in 2015. It took us uh, two years to launch direct sales in 2017 because we were building uh, advanced reader copy delivery and and sign up pages and all kinds of other features. But in the end, we did get it done. Uh, we actually announced it at Nink in 2017. And we were we were kind of. I feel like, you know, we look like we were really prescient, but really we were just kind of way ahead of the curve because that's what a, 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 some of our authors were asking us for. And then up until about um, 2020, really 2021, about when when COVID, you know, took over the world, um, direct sales was a feature that some authors really took advantage of and were really using it effectively, but most weren't. Um, and then we launched audiobook delivery in... Um, I want to say 2020. I can't remember now. It's been in beta the whole time. Um, and we made the joke about how we're not going to be Gmail and be in beta for years. And here we are. Um, and the reason is because we, we're we still learning things about audiobooks, right? It's very, very different kind of thing. It's a very different beast than ebook delivery. So now Book Funnel, you know, it used to be so much simpler to describe what we did, but now we do so many things. Um, and everything that we originally built for ebooks, you can absolutely do with all of your audiobooks. You can deliver advanced reader copies. You can deliver direct sales. You can give away free copies. You can give away short stories and novellas all in audio format. So it's it's really kind of cool. Um, we actually, indies have tools that even traditional publishers don't have, right? You can't just go to Audible and say, hey, I'd like to give away a free copy of this book to a thousand of my readers. You can't do that. Um, but you can, if you have Book Funnel, you can actually go and just and and send out audiobooks. Uh, we have a bunch of amazing features that we built all for ebooks. But when audiobooks came into the mix, it just it it piggybacked on all the technology we'd already built, and so everything you could already do with ebooks, you can now do with audiobooks. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, and I you I mean obviously I'm a I, wide audiobooks are my jam and I use Book Funnel for so many things and I'm a wide ebook author also so I use it for that as well. Um, but one of the things that I really love uh, are the universal links. 
So we talk mm -hmm. a lot about uh, books to read links, and those are great universal links as well, but they don't offer the ability to put in a, a Shopify link, for example. Um, and that's something that you can do with the big button link uh, in book funnels. So mm -hmm. we want some questions about your universal links. Uh, so maybe to start off, could you talk a little bit about how uh, people can use universal links to help sell their audiobooks, especially uh, across a lot of wide channels? Sure. So it, the, the, the idea of a universal link is that there is a single home on the internet for your book right what whatever that book is in paperback and ebook and audiobook and if you're if you're not out there and you're not already in all three formats you you know obviously this group is dedicated to audiobooks and so you guys are really pushing into that which audiobooks are i mean they have been blowing up for the last several years but they're going even faster now like we're reaching a, a huge acceleration point um but if you if you are ignoring things like paperbacks don't do that there's still a lot of the world out there that reads in paper and honestly if you're using any of the modern software tools like Vellum or Atticus or Readsy or D Draft a Digital to format your books, you can get print books for free. I mean, like they'll just, they'll, they output the EPUB and the PDF, boom, you're done. Um, so having all three formats available, what I love about the universal links is that you, you have one place to send people and say, oh, you would like my book, click here and they go there. And yes, the, we, what we call the big button um, is the one on top. And it basically, you can put that anywhere you want. If Amazon, if you're an exclusive Amazon author, then you make your big button go to Amazon, right? And, and you can change the button text and say, buy it on Amazon, whatever you want to do with it, right? We book, we always like to say at Book Funnel that we put the power in the hands of authors. So we let you control that page. You can put um, any of the, you can choose which stores you want to feature. You can choose what text you want on the page. Um, if you're doing an audiobook, you can actually put a sample of your audiobook right on that page. Um, you can decide what that sample is, right? So um, this actually came about. My my wife is a gigantic audiobook listener. My wife Julie runs the company. The two of us run the company together. I am the ebook reader. She is the audiobook listener. Um, so that is like primarily how she consumes her content. And she would get so annoyed when she'd go to Audible to listen to a sample of a book. And sometimes they would have like an author forward or a note or something in the beginning that was so long that she never even got to the first chapter to hear what the narrator would sound like reading the book. And it was so annoying when she would hit that. So we designed it. We said, no, 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 no. You can give us the sample. You decide how much of your book you want readers to be able to sample. And that can live right on um, your universal page. And then you can link to your eBooks, whatever stores, wherever it's available. You can link to your direct store with the big button. You can link to other audiobook stores. You know, we break it down by format so that readers can quickly and easily see, oh, I'm an audiobook listener. I want to go over here. I'm going to go to Scribd, which is not Scribd anymore. Um, I forget what they've ever, 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 and, or, yeah. ever, <laughs> and, ever, ever more, whatever. Um, <laughs> like, like that's, you know, uh, and so I love those because you, you never know where your readers are going to be, especially if you're a wide author, right? If you're primarily Kindle Unlimited, then you have a pretty good idea of where your readers are going to find your books. But even then, just because your eBooks are in Kindle Unlimited, well, your paperbacks may be available everywhere. Your paperbacks may be available from your direct store while your eBooks are exclusive to Amazon. You may not be exclusive. We're seeing far more authors that are getting out of exclusivity with Audible on their audiobooks because while KU is a platform that makes a, a, a number of authors a lot of money, Audible is still taking a gigantic cut of everybody's money. Even if you are exclusive, they're still taking the lion's share. So more and more authors are going, I can make more money direct if I pull my audiobooks out and I start selling, even if I can only get a small percentage of my audience to follow me over to my direct store and everybody else is still buying them on Audible, I can make more money. Yeah, absolutely. And this group is definitely the right group for that because our whole goal is to help in this group is to help authors learn how to make money on platforms outside of Audible. And I'm not anti-Audible. I still have my books on Audible uh, really for the visibility factor. But um, I, there's just so I make so much more revenue from my books on other platforms like Chirp and um, Spotify and Kobo and my direct store now. And so, yes, I agree. There is so much more potential because authors also can't control their price on Audible, but, right. which is crazy. Um, so, yes, I totally agree. And so, yeah, BookFunnel is such a great um, platform for that. So uh, we are excited that you have created these tools for us. 
Um, okay, so we had some questions come in. So I'm just going to go through and uh, sort of go through these questions, if you don't mind. So no, can... sure, let's do it. Okay, so one of the questions we had, speaking of audiobooks, uh, is when you upload an audiobook to Book Funnel right now, and I know it's still in beta, and you guys are still um, developing things. One of the questions was when you when you upload the files, you're not able to listen to them until after the audiobook has been created. Is that correct, or is there a way to listen to them to verify they're the correct files? Yeah. So there's two things. Uh, one, when you upload your original file, so Book Funnel takes the a, the so we require so we. We looked at what Audible and everybody else in the industry was doing, and we said, okay, well, we're they probably did that for a reason. So our our files are basically under the same rules, similar rules that Audible has, which is 192 kilobits per second. MP3s only is what we accept. Um, and you upload them chapter by chapter, although you can just like drag and drop the whole thing and we'll, you know, upload them one by one. So it's it's all really convenient. But um once we have those, we will take those uh, originals and we actually keep those stored in, in cold storage just in case we ever need to recompile your audiobook because the, we don't ship, just like everybody else, you don't ship those files to readers. They're gigantic and they're definitely not necessary, especially in audiobooks, which generally tend to be all spoken word. So um, once you have your originals uploaded, you can actually from your dashboard, there's a little play button next to each chapter and you can listen to each chapter of the original file that you uploaded, that is so that you can make sure that you uploaded the right thing, right? Did I get the right books? Um, are they in the right order? And then you can drag and drop and reorder. So you can do that. And then once the book is, com you can't listen to the full like compiled version of the book until after you've submitted it for compiling, it's gone through the process. Once you've done that, you can go and even just add it. The way we do it is we just add it to our own libraries, our book funnel libraries. And then I'll just go pick up my phone and I'll listen to it on my app or I will go listen to it in the cloud. So you can listen to the original files directly from the dashboard, um, but you can't listen to the like the final version until you've submitted it for compiling. Okay, okay, I think I've got that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think also, I think we're, the other thing I notice is when I upload, I have to make sure to name my files correctly. And this isn't specific to book funnel. This is to every place where you upload yeah. MP3 files is that I, when I'm uploading a box set, like sometimes I'll have it just labeled opening credits, opening credits, opening credits for all three books. So, yeah. what's, so what the book funnel program is going to do is just replace the opening credits I had with the other file labeled opening credits, which is right. my bad. I should like specify which opening credits they are. Um, and so just for anyone out there who's uploading uh, uh, box sets, that's what I found. And again, it's the same for Find Away Voices and Kobo, like you have to label your files. Yeah, we're programmers. We're, we're, we're all doing our best and we're basically just doing a sort and saying, okay, you know, presumably your files are going to sort in order of the chapters. And so if you've named them like 01, 02, 03, 04, like it'll get sorted in the right order. But yeah, box sets are a little tricky because every book is 01, 02, 03. And then the sort goes, well, 01, 01, 01 is the order that they would all go in. So yeah, you kind of have to put them together by like, you know, book one, 01 or something like that so that the, the programs don't get confused by that. Yeah, that's exactly how I do it. Yeah, I use the initials of each of my titles and then book one so that I know which which one I have. So yeah, so that's really up to the author to like make sure that we label those files correctly. Um, Lainey, yes. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to add that it is really easy to make changes even once you've compiled and submitted your final files. And BookFunnel makes it really easy to then go back, make a change and resubmit. And one thing I've also noticed is how easy it is to categorize the files. Yeah. I think BookFunnel offers some more options for like epilogue, front matter. Um, so just so some more options than maybe some of the other distributors do. Yeah, we're trying to, you know, we're we're also trying to think ahead. So trying to, you know, note what it is that that authors want to be able to do, but also what is going to make readers happy, you know, so like knowing what is your back matter, what is your front matter. Right now, we don't do a whole lot with that other than we sort of put things in the right order, right? If we see an epilogue where if we see end credits, we're like, oh, that's probably going to be the closing thing, right? And so um, book funnel. And then if we do ch number chapters, well, opening credits is not a numbered chapter, right? And neither is closing credits. So by default, if you say opening credits, da, 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 
it's book funnel is going to number all the chapters correctly. And you would be amazed by if you, if you, and then you can drag and drop them around and you can change the, the titles. Like all of that stuff is possible because um, if it's not, we'll hear from it. I promise uh, readers will absolutely go, well, uh, it says chapter three, but the narrator says chapter four, just letting you know, right. like they will absolutely email our support to let us know that there was an inconsistency somewhere. And so I book the book funnel uploader tries to do its best. And if you just drag and drop the files around, it will actually auto rename the chapter numbers as it's going so that those come out correct. Right. Definitely. Yeah, I find it very easy to use as well. It's very intuitive, which is nice. So, um, okay. So speaking of, so we have, we've talked about from the author perspective and the reader listener perspective, but we had a question from Benjamin F who is a narrator. And he said, as a narrator, what are some ways that I can use book funnel to help me promote the audiobooks that I've narrated? So if you have any so I would say like as a, as a narrator, the best thing, so, it, so book funnel has a couple of, we're not actually a promotional service, although we have some pretty powerful promotional tools, right? Um, group promos is, is probably the biggest one. It's massive. Uh, there are so many promos that are going on in book funnel and almost all of our authors use them. So you have a very large pool of authors to, to work with um, more and more. We have, have seen a lot more audiobook promos, audio and audiobook promos, either with authors doing newsletter signups or doing sales, um, doing sales promos to move audiobooks and things like that, especially as more and more authors are starting to sell direct. You know, the problem with, um, you know, as you mentioned, like the problem with doing like an audible promo, for example, um, you can't set your price. Nobody can do anything about that. And so all you can basically do is say, I have a bunch of books on audible. Um, they're not 99 cents. They're not 499. I can't do anything with them. They're just going to be the same price as everybody else. Um, but there are platforms out there like Chirp, which will let you do discount deals. And then really everybody but Audible will let you set your price. So if you wanted to go and you'll, if you go look at the board at the group promos board, you might find a promo that's like, Hey, we're doing like a 99 cent first in series audiobook promo. So everybody's going to join in. Everybody's going to get make their first in series 99 cents on whatever platforms you can, not audible. Um, and then, you know, we're going to put those as, as universal pages so that everybody can go find it where they like. So as a narrator, um, you could really sign up for a, um, you could sign up for the book funnel first time author plan, which is just $20 a year. And then you can actually look for those sales promos and join in them as the narrator promoting the books that you have narrated. So you would work with your authors and say, hey, there's this great promo coming on for uh, space opera audiobooks. Can you make your book, you know, $1.99 for the weekend so that I can push on that and promote on that? Um, it's a little harder for narrators because, of course, it's, it's not your books. But I will tell you, narrators sell books. Right. Uh, we have so many readers who absolutely Julie, my wife, Julie, who loves audiobooks, like she absolutely has her favorite narrators. And when her narrator suggests that, hey, I've narrated this new series, she'll go check it out because she loves those narrators. So there are um, there aren't a lot of tools as the narrator that you can pick up on. But for sure, you can start poking around in the group promos and in author swaps looking for audio based promos and then either work with the authors that you've that you've narrated um, or kind of put them out there yourself. If you already know that the author is selling that audiobook direct or something, just join in and point them over to their store, right? Because that's how they're going to make more sales. Definitely. Yeah, that's that's really good. And I think I think as we see narrators, um, I, I'm starting to have narrators reach out to me looking for ways to market the audiobooks that they narrate, which is really cool. So I think that down the road, we're going to see a lot more of that because um, you know, narrators narrating live on TikTok is a big thing. And you're absolutely yeah. right. Readers really, or listeners really gravitate toward their favorite narrators. So that's certainly well, a um, sort of an untapped marketing stream. <laughs> well, and even if you've, let, let's say that you've hired your narrator under contract, so you're not doing a, a royalty split or anything like that. You just paid them and they did the narration and you got it back, which is, is great. And you should, if you can afford to do that, you should consider that. Because I promise paying royalties for the for the rest of your life is actually just a logistical nightmare. But um, even if you've done that, the narrator right. is is still trying to build their profile. And so they're out there trying to let people know, look at all these amazing books that I've narrated. Go listen to these because that what's going to happen is I know tons of authors who listen to somebody else's audiobook and went, that narrator is perfect for my book. Who did that? 
then they go Google it and they find you and say, hey, I want you to do my books. I mean, like there, there are now voices that are just like the voice, right? You know, if you, if you listen to most lit RPG, um, Luke Daniels is like the voice of lit RPG, right? Um, you, he, he gets, he does so many books in that genre that, uh, and, and of course that's great because lit RPG authors or readers are like, Oh, that's a Luke Daniels book. I, I want to go get that immediately because they love his voice and they love to hear the books by him. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. That's, that's definitely a big, um, as audiobooks grow and, and con considering that I, you know, I organized two very big audiobook promos, the stuff your earbuds, which is how yeah, we originally did. met, <laughs> um, and indie audiobook deals. Um, yeah, a lot of people really want to know who the narrators are and, um, everything. So, and yeah, we, we originally met because I had, we had the first stuff your earbuds event and it had so much more participation than I thought we were going right. to have. So I emailed you to make sure you guys were okay. <laughs> Yes. And I would ask that, like, if you're watching this and you want to do a really huge promo that is going to just blow the doors off, uh, just drop us an email. Like, you, you don't have to ask our permission, but if you let us know in advance, then we would say like, oh, hey, everybody, like, we'll post a note in, in, in our Slack channel. Like, hey, everybody, there's a big promo going on today. Keep an eye out for anything that if readers are having trouble, this is what that's a part of so that we all know like where we're going and what we're looking for. But yeah, um, we've had some, we've had a number of really, really big audio promos, again, as more and more authors are starting to sell their books direct, um, even if they're wide and they're putting them on other platforms, but but more so like authors trying to build up their own stores. And even if it's the like the destination that you go to, right? So I know uh, lots of authors that will say, well, here, here's the page for my audiobook on my store. And if you don't want to buy it there, underneath are links so that you can go and buy it on Audible and you can buy it on Kobo or, or you can go read it and listen to it in the library, however you want to consume the book. But I'm going to send you to my page first because that's where I want that's where I want to train my readers to go. When you want my books, you're going to go to my store. That's where you're going to find them first. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And we definitely see a lot of the emergence of direct selling. It's really growing. I have two stores because I have 7,000 pen names. So I have a paid <laughs> store and a Shopify store. So which and I do delivery of audiobooks through book funnel um, through both of those. So yeah, it's it's really growing, which is nice. So what's um, really nice is as it's continued to grow, uh, you know, because so you, you know, it, just as a like a little technical detail, if you offer your books, uh, so book funnel doesn't do any of the selling, right? We're not the seller, we're simply the delivery mechanism. So you can sell as you were saying on pay hip Shopify, PayPal, whatever, all these different platforms that you can use. And we're just going to handle the delivery of the audiobook to the readers. As an option, authors can offer um, DRM free digital rights management for those who like uh, basically uh, unencumbered MP3s of their audiobooks if they want to. It's not on by default. It is absolutely an option that authors can choose. Some authors choose it because they really want to, they use it as a selling feature and they say, hey, if you buy from my store, you get these MP3s and you can listen to it in this great book funnel app, but you can also keep a copy and it'll never be taken away from you, right? Um, also, it will depend on your genre. You know, if you write in romance, they probably don't care about that. Um, if you write in lit RPG, they really do care about that. They want to know that when they buy that book, that they can take a copy and they're going to be able to keep it forever. So that is an option that you have that you can turn on. But most readers, what's funny is like we've looked at our data and most readers, even the ones that download the MP3s, they still listen to it in our app um, because it's a, it's a really great app. We spend a lot of time building it and making it a first class audiobook player, right? It works exactly the way that audio listeners expect it to work. And that's the, like the greatest hallmark of, of great UI is just that it works the way I think it's going to. Um, but what's great about that is that as each new author, and we have some really huge authors now that are moving into selling audio direct. And the more that they do that, every reader that buys from their store ends up installing the book funnel app and, and listening to their audio books. But that means the next day, the next time they come to your store, the minute they buy the book, it just appears in their app. So just like they had bought it on Amazon, boom, it's right there in their library. So now everybody's getting a network effect as more and more authors jump into this pool and start selling audiobooks, more and more readers already, you know, there's a little bit of that friction of like, oh, I don't want to install another app, but man, that sure is a cheap audiobook for 99 cents. Or even some uh, offers uh, authors offering free first in series, like, well, 
I'll install an app for a free audio book, right? Um, the right. beauty is that that audiobook listeners are not yet um, because audiobooks do cost a lot more to produce uh, than a typical ebook. Um, audiobook listeners are are used to paying a lot for their content, and so they're what they're really not used to is getting a four ninety nine audiobook. Like that's crazy town. Um, getting a free audiobook, holy crap, that never happens, right? And so, um, but as each author is doing these promos, and you talk about like your stuff, your earbud earbuds promo, every single reader that was brought into that, every listener that was brought in from all the authors who participated, the minute they bought the first book and got the app installed, all the rest of them that were just beep, 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 they just showed up in their library. And what that means is that as authors, we can give readers an Amazon experience without giving Amazon our money. Because now any, uh, it, they, they um, it's like Shopify, it's, it's one of the reasons why Shopify is so great, right? Shopify is kind of cool because Gucci has a Shopify store. Nike has a Shopify store. Hermes has a Shopify store. If you've ever bought anything on any Shopify store and you click the little checkbox that says, yeah, yeah, store my credit card, save it for later. The next time you go to buy something, Shopify will just go, oh, hey, hey, Damon, this happened to me. I went to buy, my daughter brought me her iPad and was like, dad, can I buy this cat bed for the cats? And I'm like, <laughs> okay, it's your money. It's your allowance. So I go right. to click on the cat bed and it's like, oh, hey, Damon, would you like to use your visa? Like it already knew right. who I was. It already had everything on file. And I just said yes. And boom, the purchase was complete. It had my shipping address. All of that stuff is done. So through platforms like Shopify and, and other platforms do it too. But like Shopify is the second largest retailer in the world after Amazon. So anybody setting up a store there has the network effect of every other Shopify author who's already out there doing business. And then if everybody's, if they're all using BookFunnel as their delivery, you have the same thing. Now as a reader, I can buy from Rebecca Hefner's store. I can buy from Lainey Davis's store. I can buy from Damon. I don't have a store, but I, as an example, I can buy from Damon Courtney's store and every single audiobook, even ebook that I buy, boom, they just appear right in my app and I can start listening. I can start reading right there. Right, definitely, yeah which is awesome. So, um, okay. So I love this discussion of direct selling. Some of the questions that we had, so I know that BookFunnel integrates with PayHip, Shopify, I think WooCommerce. We had some questions about, will it um, ever integrate with Squarespace um, and with Square itself? So Square actually reached out to us to to create an integration, and we're looking into that. the 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 holdup with companies like Square is that with every other service that we've ever integrated with, with Shopify, WooCommerce, Gumroad, Thrivecart, PayHip, PayPal, like we have a we have a pretty good collection. Um, we just we went and looked at the code, and we built the the code necessary to to handle delivery for those platforms. Square wants us to sign contracts. And so that means lawyers have to get involved because we have to make sure that we're not signing on to something that is really onerous. And the bigger company, the more onerous the contracts. So um, Square did reach out to us and we do want to build a Square integration. We have a lot of authors that are either using Square in person, you know, using the little what they started with, right? The little Square, um, you know, there's a feature on Book, Book Funnel called Print Codes. And what it lets you do is just generate unique codes against a, a uh, a media object, be that an ebook or an audiobook or whatever you want to do, right? So what you can do is you can generate codes against your audiobook. And then we have authors that take their audiobooks and, and they put that little code on the back of a little postcard or a little business card or whatever, however you want to do it. You can have printing companies print you all kinds of things. But they'll take those to craft fairs, farmers markets, conventions. So imagine you're standing at a con, at a con which uh, a lot of, especially in like sci-fi and fantasy, there are some really great conventions out there and authors go and sell lots of books. Typically they take a big old box of paperbacks and they put all the paperbacks out on the table and they sell their books. But guess what? They have readers that come up to their table and go, these books look great. I really am an audiobook listener. I don't, I don't read in paper. And they can go, oh, I'll sell you the audiobook for 10 bucks. Here, you just take this card, you type this little code in, and boom, you get your audiobook. So now you can actually do those kinds of sales. And then, yes, having and, you know that print code, you wouldn't need the integration with Square, but we do have authors that use Square as their payment processor. So that is one that I want to add as soon as the lawyers have had a chance to go over the contracts and make sure that we're not going to get in trouble later for doing something. Right. That's fair. That's fair. And what about Squarespace? Any... Update on Squarespace is just the website on build uh, the website builder on top of Square. So they're actually the same. 
Um, okay. They're the same company. So Squarespace is where Square was like literally like the little square that you could plug into your phone and you could swipe credit cards. And then they had a little app on your phone so that everybody could take money in person. Then they launched their API where you could actually do digital sales and you could take money digitally. And then Squarespace was the website sort of builder that they put on top of that. So you can go and create a Squarespace website and sell anything directly from that website using Square as the payment processor. Square is just another payment processor. Um, but they have a lot of really great tools for building out like full-blown websites and, and blogs and doing all the sort of stuff right there on your platform. So we kind of get both for free. Like if we, once we build a Square integration, it's Square and Squarespace are all going to integrate together. Great. Yeah, that's really good to know. And yeah, that is definitely um, one of the best benefits of Book Funnel that I've found is that, so a, a lot of uh, authors are, are opening TikTok shops, which you can only sell physical products. So I have a TikTok shop where I sell signed paperbacks, uh, you know, signed books. But in every uh, order, uh, just like you said, I print postcards from Canva and I use a QR code that links back and I create a specific link in book funnel for each one of these different cards. So I know I send them in my signed paperback orders and I know what, when the person receives the paperbacks and downloads the audiobooks, then I know exactly which audiobook they downloaded, where it came from. They're automatically signed up to my mailing list. So it's a really great way to convert um readers onto your mailing list and, you know, require opt-in if, if that's something that you do, which, which I do. Um, and to get, you know, on TikTok, we don't get the, the uh, customer's information, but if, if they download something that we send them from a QR code from book funnel, then they, then we now, now they're our customer because now they're on our, yeah. our list. Yeah. So. And we've been, we've, we've, we've been in contact with TikToks, TikTok. So right now they're only doing physical products. And, and so, uh, cause they actually have, I mean, technically we could build an integration with TikTok shop, but I don't want to get on anybody's bad side and I don't want to do anything that we're not allowed to do because then we go and say, hey, you can do this thing and then they shut you down. So we always work right. with, especially with larger companies, we will work with them to create these integrations so that they work seamlessly. Now, that said, um, you know, like Instagram, you can put links in your bio on TikTok and so people can click through. Um, I know just from looking at our data that there are authors out there selling audiobooks through TikTok right now. They just link to their direct store from within from their TikTok profile. And when readers click on those, because when we see the sales come through, I can see that they came from the TikTok app. So they're they're not, it's not using TikTok shop because that we can't integrate with that until TikTok decides that they want to allow or include digital content delivery. Right now it's all about physical you know, packaging and stuff, which is great. Um, but I know that there are authors out there right now that are using their TikTok to advertise and and read and play narration from their audiobooks. And then, oh, by the way, if you click on my profile, you can go to my store and you can buy my audiobooks. So they're not doing the TikTok shop, but they absolutely are selling audiobooks using TikTok. For sure. Yeah. And if you go in your TikTok ads platforms, uh, uh, you can, just like Facebook, you can enter a link. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can enter a link to your store yeah. and you can enter a link to your book funnel link or to your store and then they'll get the book through book funnel. So yeah, it's a great opportunity for sure. But I would love to see uh, digital products through book funnel on TikTok. That'd be amazing. So if they launch um, it, we'll build it. Cause I've already looked at, I, you know, I'm an engineer. So I go look at the code and like, okay, how would we integrate? They actually have everything that we need. We could build it right now. It just wouldn't be they don't want you doing that yet. And so right. uh, I'm, I'm hoping to meet with them. I met with them last year in London when I was at the self-publishing show live. Um, they sent people from the TikTok shop UK team. And so I'm hoping to meet with them again and just sort of lean on them a little bit like, hey, when are you guys gonna offer you know digital products? When's that gonna be a thing? Good, I'm, I'm sending you good vibes for that because I think that would be amazing. So that's awesome. Um, okay, an another question that we had actually from Lainey is, um, if you had to, there's so many things that BookFunnel offers. Like there's so many things I use them for, but I'm sure I'm not using the full extent of, of all the bells and whistles you all have. So if, if there are certain things that you feel like don't get used a lot um, or certain features that you think you want to shine a light on, let us know about those. Okay. So print codes, I already mentioned, that's one that I absolutely love because it's such a simple thing. 
And yet um, it's really powerful. You generate codes uh, and, and you can do them for anything. You can do them for giveaways. Like I said, we have authors that use them for sales. You can kind of do anything that you want. You basically can carry your eBooks and your audiobooks in your pocket. We have authors that use them on business cards and then they meet somebody and they go, oh, hey, let me give you a copy of my book. Um, and then they just go type in this little code and boom, they get their book, right? Ebook or audiobook, however you have it set up. So I think that's really cool because that's that's kind of a powerful thing, right? You're not going to, as an author, you're not going to walk around with like a handful of paperbacks in case you bump into somebody who might like right. the book. But if you do, you're like, oh, you know what? Oh, you read mysteries. You know what? I write mysteries. I think you'd really like mine. And so you can almost, you're also creating that personal connection. Um, and it's, again, it's just it, each code that you generate is only good for that person to download. They can join your, they get an offer to join your mailing list if they want to, or they can just download their book and go on their way. But once they do that code is dead and it can't be used anymore. So that's really powerful. Um, and that was, that's, I say like unused, most people just don't know that that's there. Once they discover it, they start using it like crazy. Um, so with direct sales, we actually built a number of features directly into the direct sales because of what our authors were asking us to try and do. So two of the ones that I really, really love is the way book funnel works is you create a, an action on the book funnel side, and then you create your product on the Shopify side or any other of the store. And then when that thing is sold, book funnel connects the two together and says, Oh, uh, when this item is sold, I'm supposed to deliver this ebook or this audiobook." but we don't actually care what that thing was. Right. So we have authors that sell, coffee mugs and tote bags. And it's like, Hey, every time you buy a tote bag, you get a free short story. And that's just automatically delivered through book funnel because book funnel doesn't care that it was a tote bag. Only that you said when this sells deliver this thing, um, you can do that to combine things together. You can say, Hey, listen, if you buy the paperback directly from my store, um, I'll ship you the e -bag. You'll get the ebook automatically, right. As just a free bonus. Um, that's really cool for things like, um, if you're doing signed paperback editions and things like that, we have authors that do signed special editions of their books that they start selling the signed editions several weeks before their books get published. And so the, 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 uh, the pitch is, hey, buy the super special signed edition and you'll get the ebook delivered instantly two weeks before everybody else. And then, you know, the, the book will come in the mail in the next week or two. But people don't mind so much if the special edition is taking longer to get there in the mail because they got the ebook or the audiobook instantly. And you can link those things together and you can create those as, as bundles however you want. Um, one of the other ones that you can do is you can bundle things together on the book funnel side so that when you sell a product on your store, Book funnel can deliver multiple objects. So we have authors that will say, well, here's the ebook, here's the audiobook, but you can buy them together in a bundle for $14.99. And then when the reader buys that, Book Funnel delivers both the ebook and the audiobook. And what's really neat about that is if you are doing um like a box set of audiobooks, you don't actually it, it's better to upload each audiobook individually, especially if it's large, right? If it's an eight book box set or something like that, it's better to upload each audiobook individually, which now you put them on your store and you say you can buy book one, book two, book three, four, four, four and you're right. So all eight of them are products on your store. But then you can also add a product on your store that says, I want to sell the entire eight book box set for 50 bucks or whatever. But when that transaction goes through, on the book funnel side, book funnel will deliver all eight audiobooks. You don't actually have to mash them together into one big thing. They'll just get all eight of them added to their library in an instant. Um, and again, that's mix and match ebooks, audiobooks. You can kind of mix and match all of that sort of stuff together. Um, and then the last one is you can actually uh, do pre orders through book funnel. So you set up the, the pre order page on your website. You're selling the book uh, in advance. So they pay their, you know, $4.99, their $9.99. Then it goes to book funnel book funnel puts them on a list sends them an email and says hey we've received your pre-order you'll receive the book whenever it's published then when you're ready and you know you set a date whatever time in the future that you think you're going to deliver the book we're not amazon so if you miss that date and you have to move it a little bit we're not going to penalize you for it so it's it's your books so you go and you fix it but when you're done when it's ready book funnel will just automatically on that date deliver all of those books to all of those readers. It'll go right into their library. They'll get an email that says, Hey, your book, you know, your book showed up today. Um, what's really cool about that is that it's all just completely automated. We added in, we looked at the way everybody else did pre-orders and we were like, okay, well, how does every, how do people screw this up? Well, 
you can create an uh, an assetless pre-order, which is a hilarious term, and, and we probably should have come up with something better. But um, you can so you can create the pre-order, you can create the book and book funnel without any files because you're not ready to deliver it yet, and that's okay. You can sell it, you can pre-order, you can put it up for pre-order even without all those files. And then once it's ready, we make sure that you lock your files that you have to go into your book funnel pre-order and say, okay, my files are totally ready. I'm ready to lock them because we saw so many times where Amazon or Barnes and Noble or somebody would screw up the pre-order and send out the old files, the unedited files, whatever, right? It just, it happened all the time. And, and it's just, I'm sure it was just a bug or a screw up somewhere, but we've tried to make sure that that wasn't going to happen. So you can set up pre-orders on book funnel and set it up for whatever you want, ebook, audiobook. And then when they buy on their store, we just hold a list until the day that you say, nope, it's good. Go ahead and release it. And then boom, everybody gets their books. They all get added to their libraries. They all get an email. Um, it's a really, it's a really, really cool thing. You know, we, all the tools that we build on BookFunnel are always us trying to give power to the authors to do the things that they want to do. So when they email us and say, hey, you know, what would be really cool is if we could do pre-orders through BookFunnel. And we go, you know what, that would be really cool. And so then we like spec it out and see how we can build something like that. Right. And I, I just did my first pre-order on my on my Shopify store for the for the book I released in um, January or February. And it was, yeah, it was really, seem I was kind of scared. I'm not great with technology as we figured out as I was setting up this StreamYard presentation. But anyway, it, it worked great and it was so self-explanatory. So I um, really appreciated that. So yeah, you guys, well, you guys do a great job of building out things, but you also do a great job of making them intuitive and offering us lots of support if we need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> our support team is amazing. And we're there 365 days a year, author support and reader support. Um, we try to keep authors in the know. So like when you're, you know, the day before your pre-order, we'll send you an email that says, hey, just letting you know, just a reminder that your pre-order is going to go out tomorrow. Looks like your files are locked and ready to go. It'll be delivered tomorrow on time. And then when we're done delivering it, we send an email that says, hey, just want to let you know, we sent your pre-order to the 400 people that pre-ordered it. Like everything was delivered. Everybody's got it. You're, you're all good, right? Because there is so much um apprehension right you know uh, it technology can go wonky and sometimes and so not only do we try to make it intuitive we also try to keep authors informed about what is going on with your book funnel account so that you don't have to worry like getting the you know you're sitting there going is, is book funnel going to deliver it tomorrow and we say yeah here's an email that says absolutely we're going to deliver it tomorrow yeah i love that yeah the communication is great and speaking of that, I noticed um, I, I must have signed up for this somewhere along the way because I'm getting these emails, which are which is great, of webinars you all are offering. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about that, of the different types of webinars you're offering and how authors can sign up to get those reminders? Sure. Uh, we So th that is, if you just join our, so when you sign up for BookFunnel, we, you join our mailing list, which is we call the BookFunnel Bulletin. And that's where we send out um, weekly sort of things that are going on and things that we're talking about. And then, yeah, the, the webinars were actually a new edition that we started um, around the end of last year. And then we've it, it's had such great success that we've started to do them more frequently. So we have a we have an orientation that we do for new book funnel authors. So as soon as you join, it's like, hey, join in the orientation call that we do. Um, I think we're doing them every other week now, but you can join in the orientation and we'll just kind of walk you through the basics of how to use book funnel. The webinars came directly from um, our author support queue. We're looking at the emails that we're getting from authors and go, man, we're getting a lot of questions about how to set up a pay hip store. Let's do a webinar about how to set up a pay hip store and integrate book funnel for ebook and audiobook delivery. So that was actually one that we just did. Um, if you go to bookfunnel.com slash videos, we have all the replays of all the recent webinars, replays of the recent orientations, as well as links to sign up for future webinars. So if you go look at our sign up links, there will be, um, it'll show the list of, of what we have upcoming. So the webinars we do every week and we pick a different topic every week. So it might be building an, uh, an advanced reader team, um, sending out advanced reader copies, setting up a pay hip store, um, how to do direct, what is all this direct sales nonsense, right? Like trying to look at the questions that we're getting as we have authors that are signing up and saying, what can we do to help some of these authors move along? And they've been really, really popular. So um, yeah, bookfunnel.com slash videos. You can find all the recent ones and you can just watch any of the replays that you want. 
Um, and then if you want to get them live, if you want to see what's happening live, you, you have to be on our mailing list, which currently is not available to non book funnel authors, right? So everybody, if you, if you're on that mailing list, you, you must have signed up for book funnel at some point. Um, but you can go to that little sign up link on the bookfunnel.com slash videos and anybody can join the webinars. You don't, we don't limit it to, to book funnel authors. You can just join in. So if you see one that's coming up, that's like, oh, that's a really interesting topic. Just join in and go and go check it out. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. I think some people, you know, I'm a visual learner, so I love watching videos and experiential learner. I love like watching people um, go through the steps that I need to go through. That's that really helps. Like reading something doesn't really um, help me that much. <laughs> so yeah, right. it's so it's nice that you that you all offer that. Um, so Lainey, how are we doing? Do we have any questions in the comments? How are we doing over there? <laughs> Current, <clears throat> pardon me. Currently no additional questions in the comments, but I wanted to pop in. Um, since I submitted my question, I joined the book funnel Facebook group, which I think is just for authors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, it's for authors. And there's posts in there about the secret menu, um, yeah. which I've been like, whoa, you know, so I'm, I'm learning all kinds of things. Um, and Damon, I thought that was really reassuring about the pre-orders because I've just set up my first pre-order. Um, mm -hmm. I've been scared until now to pre-order in my direct store. So uh, April 4th will be my exciting. That's day. fantastic. <laughs> no, it's, it's, we try to, you know, uh, uh, one of the things that we, one of the problems that we have is that we have so many features that even when I come on something like this and, and we talk about some of the features, I really can't go through all of it, right? We do so many things now that it's impossible to kind of detail everything that we do. And if you've been with us for a number of years, you might know about this stuff because you were kind of with us as it was coming out. Um, the little secret menu is, it was a post that we came up with that our author, our author team came up with is sort of like a people don't know that we do this really cool thing over here. Like, like pre-orders, like there are people that have set up direct sales and they're using it all the time. And then they come and they email us. This is the email we get all the time. Like, you know, it'd be great. It'd be really great if book funnel could do pre-orders and they're like, you can do that. Or, you know, it'd be really great if we could bundle books together in sales, you can do that. Right. But it's not always immediately obvious. Some of these sort of lesser used features. So the secret menu was our sort of way of saying, let's talk about some of the cool things you can do that are not immediately obvious when you join. Cause most authors join book funnel for one reason, right? They, they were like, Oh, I have my new book. I need to send out advanced copies. And somebody goes, Oh, you should use book funnel. And so they go sign up and they, they, they look around the dashboard and they're like, Oh, that's the thing I need to send out my art copies. And then that's it. They send out their ARC and, and they don't really poke around and see what else is available. So then they get on our, our newsletter. They start getting the bulletin. They start looking at our videos and they go, holy crap, there's a lot of stuff I can do with this thing. So they come in with one purpose in mind. I'm going to set up, so I'm going to do direct sales. And somebody said, I need book funnel. So here I am. I've got book funnel. Now, what do I do? Um, and we're trying to, to reach out to those people more and more to let them know about the kinds of things that they can do. So yeah, our Facebook group has a lot of, has several weekly posts where we're either detailing features that you may not even know about or talking about our webinars and our orientations so that when you are not sure about something, you can go like, oh, they're doing a webinar next week about this particular topic. I'm going to go sign up and join in for that. Definitely. Definitely. Um, Something else that I want to talk about is that I, a lot of authors, I mean, setting up a direct store and selling directly to customers, to readers, listeners, um, is intimidating. And it's, it can be yeah. intimidating for anyone. I mean, we're authors. We just want to sit by ourselves and write books all day, right? <laughs> so um, I think one of the questions that I get a lot uh, now that I have a direct store that's, that's hopping is, um, don't you have to take care of customer service? And, you know, what happens if they don't get their books delivered? correctly and aren't people emailing you all the time. And so something that I find that's really great about book funnel is if there is an issue like that, which I don't, you don't, I don't have quite very often because if you set up your store the right way, everything should deliver correctly, right. but um, you do have that every once in a while. And the great thing is that book funnel will handle the support. So you can send your re you can direct your reader to contact book funnels. So maybe you can talk about that a little bit. 
I, I always say that our support is our greatest feature, right? And and when I first built BookFunnel, it was literally me answering every single email. Um, and then very quickly, we had so many people coming in that that my wife, Julie, took over answering support. Now we have a full team of people because we answer emails, both author and readers, 365 days a year, even on Christmas. And the reason is, is because especially with something like direct sales, you know, if a reader comes in and downloads your, wants to get a copy of your free reader magnet and, and they're having a little trouble getting into their Kindle, it can be a little bit of a nuisance, but it's like, whatever, it's a free short story. I'll get it, you know, in a couple of hours because our, our support is, is pretty snappy. Like we answer almost every email within a few hours, uh, sometimes really, really quickly, depending on the, the, the day. Right. Um, but when it comes to sales, well, people, you know, I've paid money. I want my things. I want my audiobooks. I want the eBooks that I paid for. And so we always want to make sure that we're answering as quickly as possible. Our, our whole, our reader and author support team, all of them are trained on every device you can possibly imagine, right? A reader comes in and we're like, oh, I have a nook that's like 10 years old. We've got one, you know, I've got it probably sitting on my desk somewhere. Um, like we have, we book funnel has bought all of these devices over the years. And every time a new Kindle comes out, we buy it so that we can make sure that we know exactly what readers are seeing when they come through to us. If they say it's not showing up on my Kindle Oasis, we go grab our Kindle Oasis and we check to make sure that things are working the way that they're supposed to. And usually 99% of the time, it's just user error, but they don't know where that error is and they don't know how to fix it. And so our support team is there to answer them. And yeah, you, you know, when it comes to your store, this is the, you know, the, there's a, there's a split between book funnel doesn't do the sale. We do the delivery. So when it comes to things like, which is the, I will say the great thing about that is that we don't take any of your money, right? We haven't even talked about that, but BookFunnel is there. We are a software as a service. It, you pay a monthly fee to use our service and we don't take any cuts of your sales. So everything that you sell on your store, that's all your money. Everybody has to pay a small transaction fee, but BookFunnel is not taking a cut of any of those sales. That's all coming from your store. Now that means like when a re when a reader does come back, because we see this all the time. And I will say like the, the, I would say the number one complaint that we see from readers when they're buying direct is they thought they were buying paperbacks. I mean, yeah. we see dozens of those emails every single day. I am not sure why you thought you were getting 10 paperbacks for $4.99, but that's, you know, they they email us because they reply to the email from us saying, hi, here's your eBooks. And they go, eBooks, I thought I was buying paperbacks. Um, so that is, that's one, if you're, you know, we, we probably should do a webinar on like, tips for setting up your store. But one of the tips that I've seen, or one of the things that I've seen uh, work really effectively, um, Katie Cross, who who sells, has a massive store where she sells all the formats. And, and when you're setting up Shopify or really any of the platforms, but if you're setting up your store, you can create a, a book and then most of them will let you create variants of that book, right? They call them variants, but essentially like, okay, so I've got, you know, my, you know, my mystery book, and then I create a paperback variant that's this price, and I create the ebook variant that's this price, and I create the audiobook variant that this, that's this price. The problem with that is that if they click the wrong one, then they're going to ask for a refund because they thought they were getting paperbacks. Even if it's really, really clear, this is an ebook, this is not a paperback. One of the things that right. Katie did that I thought was really clever was she split her store into ebooks, paperbacks, and audiobooks. So when you go to her store, the first thing you select is what format do you want to enjoy my books in? I read paper. Great. Then all the products on this page are paper. So you can't accidentally select the wrong one. And of course, you're seeing the prices based on paperbacks, not on ebooks. I think the variant idea probably came from the Amazon world, where if you're looking at Amazon's page, you can see like ebook and audiobook and all that sort of stuff. And I think that's fine, but you'd be amazed, particularly, especially on your genre, how many, um, how many people get befuddled uh, by the idea that they thought they were selecting one thing and then they get another, especially if you default, you know, we have a phrase in software that's the devil is in the defaults. And so if you default to selecting ebook and they hit buy, they didn't look at that part. They didn't see it. It was, it's usually even under the buy button. Um, and so right. that's one of the tips that I would give. The, the number one complaint we see from readers is not so much that they're having trouble getting their books, although sometimes they buy ebooks and they're like, ah, I won't go to my Kindle. And that's where our support steps in and helps them. Um, but the biggest one that we see that that is actually a, a, a solvable problem on the, the store side is that they think they're buying paperbacks 
and then they they want a refund because I don't listen to audiobooks or I don't read ebooks. But yeah, our right. support team, and then we reply back to them and we say, "Oh, you know, you know, have you tried ebooks? They're they're actually really great. Like we can help you get your ebooks to your your phone. You're reading on an Android phone. We can help you do that." And they're like, "No, I just want a refund." Okay, and then we'll send them back to the author because we we don't do the money part, but otherwise we handle all the rest of the support. Yeah, the support is really great. And yeah, there are a lot of good tips like that. Um, when I first set up my store and started selling bundles, one thing that I was getting a lot of questions on from my readers uh, was which order do I read these in? Because I have them all delivered individually. So I created a, a book in book funnel mm -hmm. that is just my reading list. It's a PDF and it just has my reading list order. So that that is one of the books that's delivered with my bundle order. So if right. they order a bundle of eight books, they're really getting nine books, which is the eight books and then my reading list. And the so reading they can order. download yep. it. Yeah, to make sure. So like, yeah, there are a lot of good little tips like that. That that really decreased my um the rate at which readers are contacting me <laughs> about about that. <laughs> so well, and that's why yeah. I think it's great to it it's great to join in these other Facebook groups where authors are doing the thing that you're trying to do. You know, we're talking about marketing wide, you know, how do I market my books? How do I get more sales on Kobo? How do I reach more sales in libraries? Go to those groups, join in those groups so that you can see what others are doing and what is working. There are lots of groups out there now that are, are specifically focused on authors selling direct. I think there's actually a group called Authors Selling Direct. Um, and uh, that's like all the tips in here. Sure, I, I, my books are available on other retailers. I'm a, I believe in wide and all my books are over. But this group and the tips that we're talking about here, these are all about selling directly from your store. And you can get tips like, Oh, you should really split your formats out so that there is no confusion when a reader is coming in because most readers know exactly what they like. I like audiobooks, so I want to see your audiobooks. And if you have all of the pages, if you have them all sort of mingled together, like if you go look at, here's a perfect example. If you go look at katiecrossbooks.com where Katie sells her books, and I have lots of other examples too, but she's just one who's top of mind. Um, if you go look at her books, um, she has, she used to have, you know, you would think that an elongated cover next to a square cover would be really obvious that the square one is the audiobook and then the elongated one is the ebook and then the one that has like sort of three dimensional and has like little pages is the paperback no 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 did you <laughs> think that would be obvious um but over time she was getting people who thought they were buying the audiobook but instead they bought the ebook or whatever so she changed up all of her images if you are buying an ebook you will see the book cover inside of an iPad if you are buying an audiobook, it's the square cover with a giant pair of headphones around <laughs> the edges of it. And then if it's a paperback, it will have like a little flitter of pages that look like a paperback. Like she made each one th the same book cover, but she made variants of those book covers so that if you're looking at the page, there is no doubt that these gigantic headphones mean you are buying an audiobook, just in case it wasn't clear from the square. <laughs> <laughs> right. But those little tips, those are the kinds of things that you pick up when you go and you observe. And I would encourage you, if you're looking at selling direct, go look at other author stores, just go browse their stores and see what they're doing, especially the authors who are out there and they're really finding some success with it. How are they doing that? Are they offering like a really great bundle? Uh, Naomi Rollins is a is an author who has a, a, a big full book store. You go right to her store and the first thing she offers you is six bucks, um, six bucks, six books for like a 50% discount. So you can buy her whole Texas Promise series for one great price in whatever format that you like. But she does really, really well doing those bundles. And then once you have, a, I mean, because look, if you can sell readers, three or four books and, and, you know, nobody reads three books by an author. They're sort of meh about, right. You might read the first book, you pick up a new author and you go, meh, you're not going to go like, meh, maybe I'll read the second book. Maybe you will, but you're not going to read three books. If you're just sort of meh about it, by the time you read three books, you've started to become, or you are already a fan of that author. So if you can get readers in the door and say, listen, um, Emily Kimmelman, if you go look up, go Google her store, um, Emily Kimmelman does this where she always drives uh, all of her Facebook ads and her traffic to a six book or eight book, depending on which ad she's running, um, to a box set because she knows she's she's done the math. If I sell you six books and you read six books, I've got you hooked. You're going to buy the rest of the series. Where if I only sold you one book, you might read that one book and then just sort of, eh, like it was okay. Or you might've really liked it, but you didn't have time in that moment to go pick up the second book and you didn't think about it. So no, don't do that. Let me sell you the first six books 
for like $8. Let me just give you a blowout price because my series is 15 books long. So if you buy those first six and you read them, I'm going to get you full price for, for the next nine books in the series. And those are the kind of things that you pick up on when you look at, when you join Facebook groups that are focused on these, these kinds of elements. And then you go look at the authors that are out there, like go look at what they're doing. If somebody's offering you advice about how to sell on Amazon and their books are in the millions and ranking, maybe don't take their advice. Go look <laughs> for the authors that are actually out there doing the stuff that you're trying to do and pick it apart. What are they doing that's be that's working really well for them? Yeah, definitely great advice. Definitely great advice. Um, okay, so this has been a, such a wonderful uh, chat with you because I know there's there's just so much that you all offer. So before we hop off, um, tell me about the different pricing plans with BookFunnel. And if authors wanted to sign up, what are their options? So you can go to bookfunnel.com. It's really easy to find it. And then the pricing is right there at the top. We have our, our first time author plan, which is $20 a year. And if you're actually looking at sell, setting up um, sales, you can actually do that on that $20 plan. And you can start to sort of play around with what you can do. You, you can't do audiobooks on that plan. You have to be on the next tier up. So the next tier up is the mid, what we call the mid-list author. And that's $10 a month. And you can get a discount if you pay annually, annually but for 10 bucks a month. And then um, audiobooks are still in beta for a few more months, but you can just ask us and we'll add you to it. Um, everybody gets added. It's an open beta. It's not like a, you need our permission. We just want to make sure that everybody understands that we're still technically a beta because there's a few things that we're figuring out. But at this point, we've delivered millions of audiobooks. Like it's, it's not beta quality software. It's beta like our brains haven't quite figured out how all of this stuff is going to work yet. Um, so that mid list plan is $10 a month. And then it goes up from there and, and adds other features really at $15 a month um, or $150 a year because you get a discount if you pay annually. That is our mid list plus integrations plan. And that pretty much gets you every feature on BookFunnel, right? That you can at that plan, which is our most popular plan by, by a huge margin, that will let you do everything that you want to do on BookFunnel. The plans up from after that basically just add more pin names or more downloads or like a bit more of the things that you already get, but there are no features at those higher level plans that you don't already get at the mid list and integration plan. Awesome. And and those okay. have been our price. And I will say those have been our prices since we launched in 2015. We've we've never raised our prices on our customers. We we feel like they're really fairly priced. We want to make sure that twenty dollar a year plan that is there because we want to make sure that that even new authors that are just starting out with all of this stuff can use BookFunnel. There's there's you can absolutely do a lot of this stuff yourself, right? Um, you could go set up your Shopify store. You could use some sort of plugin to deliver your downloads as PDFs or EPUBs or whatever. Um, please don't do that. Like there's there's really no reason why you need to do that when for $20 a year, BookFunnel will handle all the support for your readers. We will help them when they have trouble. And you may find that 99% of your readers have no problem, right? They understand what EPUBs are. They know how to send to Kindle. They're just not confused by this. Um, but there's always that 1%. And so we keep our price. We keep that $20 plan because we know that that, well, when you're first starting out as an author, there's a lot of things that you got to like, like starting any business, right? The great thing is like, if you really looked at it, if you went out and you wanted to start a coffee shop tomorrow, you're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars in investment. Um, you know, starting off as a new author, eh, maybe a $45 copy of Scrivener. Um, if you really are, you know, you want a Guild of Lily, you can pay for Atticus or Vellum for formatting, although draft to digital will make a really nice looking book for free. Reedsy's editor will do it for free. Like you can get into the ebook publishing game for, for very, very little money. And so we want to make sure that as you're building out your career and as you're building out your author brand, that you can use the tools on book funnel and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to get started with all this stuff. Definitely. Well, I know the authors appreciate that. I think it's very reasonably priced and especially with the support you all offer. Um, yeah, that's great. So, so everyone can go to bookfunnel.com and find all this information, find the information, find the videos, pricing, all that good stuff. Um, so Damon, thank you so much for joining us and for answering all of our questions. <laughs> and um, Lainey, thank you as well for helping me moderate. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. I had a good time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. And I hope everyone has a good day. I'll make sure to repost this link um, and tell everyone how to find it. And I think it'll post in the group as well. Um, we'll see how that works. But 
Um, but Damon, thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye, everyone.